In this fourth video, I will continue explaining about the pre-processing of EEG data in Brain Vision Analyzer. In the previous video, we discussed topographic interpolation, uh, we re-referenced the data, and we filtered the data. So next on the list is segmentation, then ocular correction, artifact rejection, and then we average the data. So the first next step is um, segmentation. So what we do in segmentation is what you can see here. So for every, um, every trial in the data that we select, we want to have the, a segment, or sometimes people call this a, a trial or an epoch. And this is um, the continuous data that is cut around um, a certain trial or stimulus. Here you can see that it's around the stimulus S22. Um, and you can see here for operation info what was done. So the segmentation here was done um, um, according to a reference marker. And the reference marker is the trial or the trigger or the, um, the stimulus. So this is just different names for the same thing. And here they call it a reference marker. So it's stimulus S21 and S22. And then what was done is uh, 100 milliseconds before these stimuli were presented. We want to cut the data until uh, 1000 milliseconds or one second after the data. So in total, we have um, 1100 milliseconds of data for every event. Uh, then here you can also see how many um, trials or how many events or epochs were selected for this participant. So this participant in the data had 288 um, trials available. So now um, all the electrodes have uh, the trials at one point. And now if you scroll through the data, you don't scroll through um, the continuous data, but you scroll through the subsequent trials, as you can see. Okay, so for the next step, um, I will select this um, electrode because here you can clearly see that there's an eye blink. So the, the eye blink electrodes show that there is something happening. Um, and if I click here, like this, here you can see a pretty clear eye blink that is uh, definitely distorting this, uh, this trial. Um, and preferably we want to get rid of it um, and have the, the normal data without the eye blink. And that's possible with ocular correction. So with ocular correction, you select um, the eye electrodes that were in your data. And then with computation, um, you can remove this eye blink. And we can look at this by grabbing this and putting it over here. So we have an overlay in here. You can clearly see really nicely that the eye blink was corrected. So it's removed from the data, which is really nice. Um, so after this is done, we can click on this. We get the same thing, but now the, all the eye blinks are removed from the data. Then the next step is the artifact rejection. So you can already see that if you scroll through the data, some of the events uh, don't look so great. Um, maybe there is some movement. Actually, these look pretty okay, but there may be some uh, movement in there. Um, and then it has to be removed. So um, with artifact rejection, it kind of like controls. So it goes over all these events on all electrodes. And it, um, according to some rules, it rejects um, trials. So the whole trial gets um, rejected. So let's look at this operation infos. So it says that it's doing this on all these um, 34 electrodes. And what it's saying is that we want um, only a maximum allowed voltage step of 50, hertz, uh, 50 microvolt per millisecond. So if there's any big step of increases or decreases of, um, of the voltage uh, per millisecond, um, that will be removed um, and it will be marked as um, bad before the event and 200 milliseconds after the event. Um, and then we also have maximum allowed difference of values in an interval. So over the um, interval of, um, of the, the length of the epoch, there can no, cannot be an, a voltage difference of 120. Also, some other things, there's also kind of like lowest allowed activity in intervals. Um, and after all of this, um, we can see that there were 280 um, kept segments. So that means, if you remember correctly, um, there were 288, so there are eight um, removed segments. So that's that's pretty good that only eight um, segments had to be removed. 
Okay, so after this, we can click here, and then we only have those um, trials or segments left over that have no artifacts in them and no eye, cr eye uh, blinks or eye movements. And then the next step um, that really depends on your uh, paradigm, because in this paradigm we have congruent and incongruent trials. So we want to split for that, and that's why we do segmentation again. And this segmentation is done, as you can see, on stimulus um, S21. So 21 was the code for the congruent trials. And then we do this again um, for S22. Um, and that was the incongruent trial. So then we have separate segmentation for the congruent and the incongruent. And what we do then is um, averaging. So um, we have uh, a lot, as you can see here, we have a lot of trials. We have 280 um, left. So what we want to do is average all these 280 trials into an average. So that's this computation. And what you see then is that a lot of the noise is canceled out and that we get um, a, nice, um, a nice ERP. So um, let's look at this one, for instance. We have um, something that looks more like an ERP wave, but obviously this is only from one participant. So this is an average. You can also compute a grand average, which is over all participants, because this is, although it's a lot of trials, it's still only one participant. So you still have some noise in the data, as you can see. Then the final step is to baseline correct it. If we click on there, um, you can see that now it's nicely um, baselined uh, around zero. Um, and it uses this part before the event starts. The event starts at one over here, um, and it's nicely baseline corrected. So the, the ERP is nicely um, on the baseline. And that's the final step. Then we have for, um, so this is done for every task. Um, and ultimately we have um, data here for every participant. Uh, we have kind of like an, a personal uh, ERP. So the next step would be to, um, to run this whole tree on all the other participants. And after that, we can start exporting the data.